If you're looking to buy a property in the next few weeks or few months, there's a good um, chance that you'll be buying into a strata title property. And if you're buying into a strata title property, it is important that you understand the difference between a strata and a freehold. And to answer that question, that very important question, I've invited Shane White to talk to us about strata. Shane White is a director of a company called Strata Title Consult. Um, he describes himself as a solution finder and a problem solver. Shane has over 30, 40 years yeah. experience in the industry. You work for Landgate for about 30 years. Yeah. So in other words, Shane knows what he's talking about. So as I said, I want to ask Shane a few questions about Strata because it is important that you understand what it is you're buying into. So Shane, let me ask you first question. If I'm a first time buyer and I see the property that I really, really like is a strata title property. What is it that I need to understand? What is different you know, with a freehold property? A strata title property is very different to owning a, a freehold house title in that you're governed by a particular act called the Strata Titles Act, yep, okay. which has bylaws and a strata plan that define what it is that you own. If you're not familiar with looking at a strata plan, then get someone who is and explain it to you. The bylaws determine how meetings are conducted and election of council members, but also the other half of the bylaws uh, are more concerned with behaviour or conduct of the owners within the strata scheme. So it's an indication that you can't do anything that you just felt like doing, like changing the appearance of your, your lot, changing okay. the colour, adding uh, alterations to the building. Can I have a patch if I want to? Well, it's very important that you find out from the agent if there is a no pets bylaw. Okay. Uh, unless uh, you come under one of the exemptions for guide dogs or assistance animals, uh, you would not be permitted to have a pet. So uh, it's best to find that out first before you have to get rid of your dear old moggy uh, before you can move in. So, so basically, if, I, if I'm looking at buying into a strata property, I need to be aware of what the bylaws are. And basically bylaws, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, but bylaws is basically a set of rules. Yes. Uh, because as you said, when you buy into a strata property, you just can't do anything that you want. Uh, there are some restrictions and I think you mentioned to me before we started taping that one of the biggest differences, I guess, with a strata title property is that you've got, you, you live among other people. Yes. There's close a prox proximity. close proximity. So it means that you need to be mindful, respectful of other people. Mm. And, and the, you know, we're at the point where we need to put some of the rules into writing and we call that a bylaw. Yeah. Now, if I'm buying into a strata title property, are there any particular documents that I should be provided if I'm interested in property, if I want to make an offer on the property? Look, it's, it's most important that you receive a copy of the strata plan because that will determine what the boundaries are for the buildings that are on okay, that yep. strata scheme. And those buildings might be the responsibility of the strata company to repair, uh, or otherwise they may be your responsibility to repair. Now, depending on that responsibility, uh, the obligation to repair, if it's within the strata company's responsibility, they will incorporate that repair cost into the levies for the strata scheme. Okay, all right. So obviously levies is another thing I need to be aware of. Yes, the levies. So what, what is a levy? A levy is an amount of money that's raised uh, at an annual general meeting uh, through a budget that allocates money for certain expenses that are the day-to-day -day expenses during the year for the administration fund. Mm. And there may be an allocation of additional money to a reserve fund for future contingent expenses. Okay. That so that's something that I, as the owner, as a new owner, need to pay. Is that usually on a quarterly basis? Is it's that usually on a quarterly basis. Is the strata fees, levies, same thing? Yes. Same well, it's thing. Strata, it's in the act, it's called the strata levy. Okay, but I mean, it's, I, I, yeah. I, no, I deal with a lot of first home buyers and, and, and I see them going through home opens as well. And the question is always, what are the strata fees? So that's pretty much what yeah, we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, what now, are the fees all up? Yeah. That's, so if, is there a risk in um, associating lower strata fees with a better buy? Well, if you were comparing different strata schemes uh, around and, and worked out what the fees were for a place down the road, a place over the other street in a different suburb, you could get an average idea of what the levies are per quarter 
to run a strata scheme of the same size uh, and quality. If the strata scheme has abnormally low levies, that might be an indication mm. that they're not accumulating enough funds for future repairs to the strata scheme or they haven't allocated any money for repairs that are required during that year. So what does that mean? If, if let's say they don't have enough money to pay for repairs and whatever repairs that we're talking about, they don't have enough, what happens there? Well, it means as a purchaser, you're walking into a possible increase in levies through special levies. So, so it means I need to pay more. Well, I yes, basically need yeah, to pay my share, yeah. my share, Your and share. Yeah. my share of whatever it costs to yeah. do that. Well, the share is um, determined by the unit entitlement mm. values. Mm. And if you've got a bigger unit, you might pay a lot more than someone with a smaller unit. Mm. But, oh, well, right, okay. Yeah. okay. So the, the, what yeah. we're saying is that, no, as, I, as I said at the very beginning, you need to go into a strata title property with both your eyes open. Yeah, you definitely. need to understand the difference. There's great opportunities there. They're great properties. You just need to be aware. Yeah. So when, so just coming back to my original question, when you asked the agent to provide you with inf information about the strata title property. So you said you want a copy of the bylaws. What else do you need? A copy of the strata plan. Strata plan. Strata plan. That's right. Yeah. And what else? And the uh, minutes from the last annual general meeting or any other extraordinary general meetings that have okay. transpired since the last annual general meeting because that will give you an indication of the topics that have been discussed during the general meeting and if those items of business have been addressed and if they've raised funds to fund any uh, items of a repair or maintenance nature. There may be ongoing uh, problems in the building that they're trying to resolve but they haven't got sufficient funds to fix them. So there might be the indication that a special levy might be uh, invoked at a later time mm. during the year. So you need to be aware of that. Yeah. That's you what need you're to buying be aware into. Of it. You're, you're then, buying into the, any existing problems that are in the strata scheme that you might have to fund the repairs to. Now, what happens? You know, when you buy when you buy a property um, and and you engage a settlement agent. Settlement agent's job is to obviously transfer the title from the seller to the buyer. But it's also to look at you know, any other fees that the seller has incurred that go past the settlement time. Is a, an extra levy or that the seller would have paid and is now selling, is that something that a new buyer would be liable for? Generally, whatever the levies are that are due, uh, if the quarterly levy was payable, then if the owner, the current owner has paid it up front, they would be entitled to be reimbursed okay. the extent that was mm. left unpaid or well, unused and uh, they would be refunded that amount in the Is settlement. that true for extra yeah. levies as well or just a normal quarterly well, levy? If the, if the special levy was due and payable during the period of that quarter when mm. it was payable, then uh, the uh, existing owner may be responsible to pay that mm. prior, although it will come out of the settlement fee. Okay. But All any right. ongoing mm. continuing mm. payments they would be payable by you when they become due. So obviously, you need to be aware of it. You need so to the, be aware of the any minutes, uh, the yeah. minutes of the AGM. Again, make sure you get a copies of that. Uh, now, what happens? You know, because I guess few of the buyers will be lawyers, and you know, I know if anyone is like me and you see a legal document, you probably fall asleep after the first Go sentence. Um, but if I realise that I need to be aware of what I'm buying into, what my responsibilities are, uh, what my level of ownership and, 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 and regulations are, where do I get help? Well, you could contact any number of strata consultants that are around. I'm available to provide uh, information on in interpreting the strata plan and, and your responsibilities under the bylaws. I will, by the way, I will provide the details you know, to, to get in touch with sure. you. in. Um, in, in the past. But it's important that you understand what you're buying into and those bylaws will determine how you act and conduct yourself whilst you're an owner in the strata scheme. Would a settlement agent be able to help you with that as well? Look, a settlement agent could provide you with a copy of them. Whether they have a, a good understanding of mm. uh, interpreting a strata plan is a some do, some don't. Uh, they would possibly highlight the area on the strata plan yeah. and say these are all the different parts of your lot that you own. You've got a basement uh, storage area, you've got a car park, you've got a yeah, ground okay, floor yeah. and a first floor part lot. If the levies are low, then it's an indication that either the building's not being maintained properly or there's no allocation of funds for future repairs. If you do a comparison mm. of that scheme to another of equivalent size and their levies are $500 more per quarter, 
it might be that they are working to save mm. money to, for future repairs and are actively involved in maintaining the strata scheme as a whole. So yep. that would include the painting of the scheme, the, the roofs, yep. the driveways, the gardens, and any other works that they, they may need uh, particular to that strata scheme. So it's an indication that they're putting money away. Your copy of the general meeting minutes would indicate that a certain amount of money is being put away for a reserve fund, mm. and that's why the levies are higher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, I, as a buyer, I can ask those questions, isn't it? Yes. Why is it low? Why is it's, it high? You need to know what questions you need to, to know. ask. That's, that's right. When the agent provides you with the, those documents, the bylaws, the minutes of the AGM, uh, etc., make sure that you actually have a look at it. As I said, if you've got any questions, make sure you get you ask the, the questions. Um, as I said at the very beginning of the video, the reason why I'm about it, Shane, is to really um, give us an insight uh, view into what's involved in yeah. buying a strata property. Because as I said, the likelihood that you will be buying a strata property is increasing with every year. And I think even the local government has big plans for, uh, for yeah. strata title property. And it's pretty much the way of the future. So you need to know what you're buying into. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The financial obligations and your behavioural obligations. That's right, yeah. yeah. Know what you're buying into. Yeah. And so that's pretty much the, the main message uh, for today. Shane, thank you very much for sure. coming in today. As I said, I will um, put your contact details in, in the post. So if you've got any questions, um, get in touch with Shane and he'll be more than happy to, sure. to uh, find a solution or to solve a problem. Sure. All right, thank you very much. See you later.